Hello everyone, my name is Helen and I'm the Community Manager for Prelights, which is the preprint highlighting initiative supported by the Company of Biologists. We know that preprints have seen a big increase in popularity in recent years, so in this presentation I'm going to talk a little bit about what preprints are, some background as to where they've come from, and also about how the preprint landscape is changing. So to begin, I thought a good place to start would be by defining exactly what a preprint is. And I borrowed this definition from an, another initiative called ASAP Bio. And they define a preprint as a scientific manuscript that is uploaded by the authors to a public server. So the main difference between a preprint and a traditionally published manuscript that we might be familiar with is that a preprint is not peer reviewed. So they may be uploaded prior to or around the same time as submission to a formal journal but they might also be uploaded just as a, a record of work on its own. So that might be negative results or confirmatory results or something that otherwise wouldn't get published in a journal, but is still a useful resource for the scientific or the research community. And it's really important to note that preprints are compatible with journal submission. And that's something that I'll mention again a bit later as well. So the, the history of preprinting is actually a little bit longer than you might think. So the idea of sharing research prior to it formally being published actually began in the 1960s with these information exchange groups, which were launched by the NIH. Um, they weren't very long lived, but they weren't unsuccessful. They just didn't have a terribly long lifespan. And it wasn't then until the 1990s that we saw the launch of preprint servers, similar to what we're familiar with now. So in 1991, we saw the launch of Archive. Um, and Archive is an online repository for research, predominantly in physics and maths. It began as a kind of email serve list and then evolved into the preprint server archive that we know now. And it's really the archive model that other preprint servers have been based on. So in 1994, we saw the launch of SSRN, um, which is a preprint server for the social sciences. And then in 2013, we saw the launch of BioArchive by Cold Spring Harbor Labs. And this is the main preprint server for research in the biological sciences. And subsequent to that, we've seen the launch of similar um, archive type preprint repositories for different research areas too. So I've just put on there Paleo Archive, Chem Archive, Earth Archive, or uh, paleontology, chemistry, and the geosciences, but this isn't uh, conclusive. There are many different preprint servers for lots of different research disciplines. But as you can see on this pie chart on the right, it's still archive and research in SSRN, so things like economics and social sciences that still predominate in preprint servers, and they're still the most popular disciplines for preprinting even to date now. So if Preprints are often published separately in journals as well as finalised manuscripts. Why are preprints beneficial to researchers? Why are they beneficial for readers as well? Well, actually, preprints are beneficial for lots of different reasons, um, especially for early career researchers. So for authors, preprints can be referenced, so they provide a referenceable, citable record of work with a DOI, and that can be used on things like grant applications, job applications, even in published manuscripts or other preprints, you can cite other preprints in your reference list. So it's a record of work that might happen quicker than you would normally anticipate if you were to go down the traditional scientific publishing or any kind of research publishing route. And for readers and for authors, publishing work on a preprint server is free. It's not behind paywalls, so anybody can access that without having to pay for it. So it opens up your research to a broader audience as well. And then beneficial for authors and for readers um, in the respect that publishing on a preprint server, again, makes your work accessible much more quickly. So you don't have to go through the peer review process, which as we know, can be very long and really delay the time it takes from finishing your manuscript, concluding your experiments, and finally getting it published and out there into the research community. So preprints bring early access to new findings and technologies, and they can also set up collaborations or discussion much more quickly than you would expect if you were to wait for your work to be published in a more traditional room. But of course, as the preprint um, uptake has been very rapid, there's also concerns by the publishing community and by researchers as well, that there might be some problems with preprinting their work. The first I think is that researchers are concerned that if they preprint their work and it hasn't been through that peer review process, and if it's then found to be problematic, that can be damaging to their reputation. But I think that actually really depends on what people choose to preprint. 
So if you're preprinting work that is also going to be submitted to a journal or you're preprinting work that is a conclusive a body of work in itself, it's not something that you're just rushing to put on a server, then I think that fear is a bit misguided. I think that's really dependent on what people choose to preprint themselves. Um, and perhaps means that maybe we are a bit over-reliant on the peer review process and the pre-printing process can actually avoid that and make people think more about what they're putting out into the research community. And again, I think tying into that with the reputation damage concern is that there's a lack of validation because it hasn't been through that peer review process. But we also know that peer review is not infallible. We do see paper retractions. We see problems with published work that's been peer reviewed. So I think, again, perhaps a bit of over-reliance on peer review there. And as researchers, there has to be some degree of individual assessment of work. And when you're looking at new research and drawing conclusions from it, that's something you should probably have to think about as well, instead of relying on something that just because it's been published in a journal is something that you can completely rely on. Another concern is that pre-printing work can lead to your work being scooped. Um, I think there's a bit of confusion around that because actually preprints give a timestamp of deposition. So if you upload your work onto a preprint server, it's got a DOI with a timestamp on it. That's a recorded marker of when it was put online. So any subsequent work that might converge on your findings has to cite that preprint, otherwise they're running the risk of plagiarism. So to a certain extent, I think preprints provide great, greater clarity around concerns around when work has been published or when converging groups come on the same results in the same field. And the last concern perhaps is that journals won't accept preprinting work. And historically, this might well have been a valid concern. But in fact, most journals now accept preprints or work that has been preprinting can still be submitted to a journal for publication. And you can see here, I've just put two examples. On the left, you can see Nature Portfolio journals who say that they encourage uh, the use of preprints prior to submission to their journals. And some companies, even uh, including the company Biologists, have a one-click dual submission approach. So you can simultaneously submit your manuscript to a preprint server, as well as submitting it for publication in the journal at the same time. So we're really seeing that uh, unification in a way of preprinting work that you're also looking to then publish more traditionally or more formally in a journal. And as we see preprints becoming more popular, we're also seeing initiatives related to preprint review and preprint curation. So these are just a few examples from the biological research community, which is what Prelights works in, which is why I've chosen those fields. But you can see there's these um, review initiatives on the left, so providing feedback on preprints that in some cases can be used as a peer review for submission to journals. So you can say that this preprint has a peer review from this website, um, as part of your application to submit to a journal. And again, curation. So because of this huge influx of preprinted work, curation helps to draw attention to preprints that might be interesting to specific fields. And we're seeing lots of preprint curation initiatives spring up. And I've just uh, shown pre-lights in the middle here because to some extent, pre-lights kind of bridges that preprint review and preprint curation. Um, and you can sort of, I'll just quickly show you the, the pre-lights infographic here, which shows how pre-lights work. So in the instance of pre-lights relating to biological sciences research, we have a, a team of early career researchers who are our pre-lighters who select interesting preprints that are interesting to them, but also interesting to the field they work in or to other researchers in that field. And they write a digest of that work as a news and views type summary which is also sent to the authors of the preprint and the authors of the preprint are free to comment on it, free to answer questions or provide additional insight. And that's always a very positive experience between the pre-lighters and the authors. Um, about two thirds of our pre-light posts do have comments from the authors on them. And I think that shows that this thinking about using preprinting and community review as a more collegiate version of peer review, you know, how can this work be thought about differently? How can we improve it? so that it leads to successful publication. And I think that's a really um, important thing to think about in terms of preprints and how that landscape is changing. So in summary, we can see that preprinting is increasingly common across many academic disciplines. It's not just biology, as I said, uh, physics, maths, and the social sciences are really big in preprinting. Preprints are largely compatible with formal publishing. So it doesn't matter if you submit work as a preprint, you can still submit that to a journal for publication. 
early career researchers can really benefit from proofing to their work because we see that time spent deposition of submission and you can use that as a citable reference in grant applications or in job applications. And as preprints become more popular, we're seeing more of these preprint curation and review platforms. So I hope that was a useful introduction to preprinting. Thank you very much.